If you see a strange lady in a black dress who claims to see ghosts, run. If I knew what was going to happen to me on the day my wife asked me to run to the store and grab a new set of kitchen supplies, I would have just stayed at home and ordered them online. But like they say, a happy wife, a happy life. It was Saturday morning. My wife and I had just got our first new house. On this Saturday morning, it was our first morning in our new home. My wife, Samantha, tall, skinny. She never skipped yoga class once in her life. She was in the kitchen putting the rest of our stuff in the cabinets. My wife, who was six months pregnant with our daughter, she was moving around in the kitchen like her belly was not sticking out. I kissed my wife on her cheek and grabbed my car keys. I am going to the store. You need anything? I asked. Um, yes. Can you grab us a new set of kitchen supplies like dishes and plates? She asked. Sure. No problem. I replied before I could step out the door. And one more thing, my wife said. Can you stop by at the spiritual shop is not far from here. I need a sage so I can sage this house. You never know what kind energy the previous owners left, she said. Okay, no problem, I replied. I started the car and thought to myself, well, first stop, the spiritual shop. As I am writing this letter today, I really wish I hadn't stopped at the spiritual shop that day. As I was leaving the driveway, I looked in my rear view mirror just to see my wife waving at me goodbye. I smiled and honked to let her know I see her. This is when things got really weird. After driving for 10 minutes, the GPS took me to a street surrounded by a lot stores as I was driving slow looking around the stores so I don't miss the spiritual shop. Finally, I saw it, Bled Air Spiritual Shop. The shop was located to my left across the road. I parked my car and walked to the light to cross the road. The street was not as busy. After the walking sign came on, I started walking towards the spiritual shop. Before I get to the sidewalk, I heard the sound of a car. The car sounded like it was coming fast and was getting closer to me. By the time I looked to see to confirm if this car was really not going to stop, it was too late. I seen a black Cadillac 200 feet away from me, coming at full speed. I jumped to the sidewalk, the black Cadillac swerved almost hitting other cars. I heard the other cars honk at it, one driver yelling the F word out loud. I was shocked at what happened. My heart skipped a beat. I was running out breath standing in front of the spiritual full shop door. I figured I needed to catch my breath before entering the shop. I pushed the door and walked in the shop. Inside the shop smelled like burning candles, sages, and incenses. A soft meditation music was playing in the background of the shop. This was just the beginning of my nightmare. In front of the cashier register, there was a short African-American lady with long braid hair, wearing a black dress, her nails also were painted black. Did you see that? I asked, pointing outside the door, trying to see if she saw how the car almost hit me. The lady said, yes, with smile on her face. Welcome to New Orleans. Some people, they drive crazy out here, she said. Before I could say anything else, the lady in the black dress stepped out from the register and walked towards me. She stared into my eyes like she was reading my soul. It was awkward, to be honest. Then the lady stepped back and said, You must be new to this town, she said. We moved into town yesterday. I replied, How did you, before I could finish what I was trying to say, and you here for a sage, she added. At this point, I thought to myself, This lady is a psychic. That's is correct, I replied. Follow me, the lady said. I started walking behind the lady as she lead the way. I have a lots of gifts, including the gift of seeing ghosts, she said. I didn't say anything. I was just ready to get the sage and be done with this awkward and weird energy, I thought to myself. The lady opened a door behind the register. It was a small room. The room looked like a waiting room, but there were no chairs, only some sigil symbols on the walls and some crystal stones. Sit on the floor is good for you. I will be right back, she said. Feeling awkward, I sat on the floor. There was a blanket with sigil symbols all over it, laid in the middle of the room. I noticed to my right on the corner of the room, there was a teenager girl. She was skinny, tall, dark hair, probably only 19 years old. Something was odd about this girl. She was facing the wall, not bothering to move around to even see who just walked in. I also realized in front of her there was a dark candle. The candle was lit and she was just staring at the candle flames. She must be meditating, I thought. 
After 10 minutes, I started to lose patience. Where the hell is this lady? I thought. I tried to look at my watch to see what time it was. I looked at my wrist, wait. I didn't have my watch. That's odd, because I swear I had it on me that day. I let it go. Maybe I thought I had it, but didn't. So I decided to call my wife and tell her I was going to be late. As I reached into my pocket to get my phone, to my shocking surprise, my phone was also missing. What the hell is going on? At this point, I was done with this shop. I was ready to leave. I looked at the teenager girl who was still staring at the candle. Excuse me, I said. Do you know how long she is going to take? I asked the teenage girl. The girl turned around and looked at me. Her face was emotionless. Are you waiting for your parents too? The lady told me my parents are coming to get me, the girl said. She then turned back to the wall staring at the candle. Something was not normal with her. She looked like she was under spell. Okay, it is time for me to leave. Before I could get up and leave, I figured I should let the lady in the black dress know that I am leaving. Hey lady, I am leaving. I have to get home. I yelled. When I tried to get up, something was not right. I noticed I couldn't get up. It felt like there was an invisible force pushing me down to not get up. I felt like I was paralyzed from my chest down my legs. I tried to move my hands and my legs, but my body was not responding to my brain. What the heck? I screamed. Lady, I don't know what this is about, but if you don't let me go, I will call the cops. I said. The lady must have heard me. She came in the room. She was holding a candle, a black candle similar to the girl next to me. She put down the candle right in front of me. Then she said, be quiet or he will hear you. Keep your eyes into the flame of this candle. It will keep you safe, she added. Let me go, you crazy lady. I screamed angrily. I am keeping you safe from the shadow man, she said. Before I could ask who the hell she is talking about, we heard a loud noise from outside the shop. The noise was not human noise or animal noise, it was the noise of a creature. He is here, stay here and look into the candle, the lady said. Like I said, I see ghosts, this one is a bad one, she added. Then the lady ran outside the room shutting the door behind her. I heard her, chanting some ancient language, then the creature noises stopped. As I was sitting on the floor in that room paralyzed, the only thing I could do was move my eyes around the room. I looked around the room for a weapon or anything we can use, so me and this teenager girl can escape from the lady in the black dress. I looked at the girl next to me in the room. Now I know she is a victim just like me trapped in this room. Hey, we need to get out here. You see that amethyst stone? I want you to grab it and hide behind the door when she comes back in the room. Hit her with the stone to where she is unconscious, then we can get out this place. Are you able to do that? I asked the girl. The girl then nodded her head, saying yes, but I can tell she is scared and nervous to take on my terrible idea. I know what you're thinking by now. What kind of man tells a teenage girl to hit an old lady in the head with a rock? Well, first, I couldn't move, and second, this was our only chance of getting out there. And besides, this is not just an ordinary lady. There is something sinister with this lady. And soon, the girl and I will find out. Nervously, the girl got up. She picked the rock that was at the corner of the room. She walked by the door and stood next to the door. With the rock in her hand, I noticed she was a little bit shaking. I looked at her. You will be fine, I said. Deep down, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. After a couple minutes, we heard the lady coming. I seen the girl getting ready to swing as soon as the lady walks in. When door opened, the girl swung at the lady aiming to hit her on the back of her head. But to my surprise, the lady caught the girl's hand before she hit her. This is when I knew both the girl and I are no match for this lady. I seen the fear in the girl's face as the lady in the black picked the girl up in the air, using only one hand. Her feet were not touching the ground. The girl tried to get out of this lady's grip, but she didn't succeed. The, the lady looked in the girl's eyes. I seen the lady's eyes, they were dark. She had the eyes of demons. While holding the girl with one hand, I thought you were different. I gave you a little freedom, and now you turned against me? The lady said. But this time, her voice, it wasn't normal. Her voice sounded like a demon voice. Then the lady threw the girl across the room. The hit the wall. She screamed because of pain. 
Let her go, I said. The lady in the black, she ignored me and teleported herself to the girl. She was standing on top of the girl, ready to attack again. But then this is when I noticed something. The impact of the girl getting thrown by the wall somehow. It turned off my candle. I noticed I could move. I finally saw what was holding me back. My whole body was wrapped around with this strange roots coming from the ground like a snake. This roots, they were moving like they were alive. At first, I didn't see them, but now the candle is off. The spell is broken. I saw them. I got up quick before the lady attacks the girl again. I picked up the rock and then hit the lady with the rock. I should have known this would do no damage. The lady turned around and looked at me with her demon eyes. She then pushed me with her two hands. Her strength were not human strength, because after that push, I flew through the door, breaking the door open. Then I felt glasses breaking on my back, while still in mid-air flying from the push of the lady. Then I landed on a concrete. I felt my whole body in pain. As I was trying to get up, I noticed something. I was outside the shop. I also noticed another shocking thing. The street was silent. The sky was dark red. The sky was not the same as it was earlier when I got here at the shop. Wait, where is everyone? The street is the same street. All the stores were still here, but the place looked like it was abandoned and everyone disappeared. It was like I was in a different world. The weather felt a little calm but cold. It was a little bit foggy, I could barely see anything. I finally got up, remembering I have to get in the shop to save that girl. I noticed the broken glasses on the shop fixed itself. I tried to open the door, it didn't work. I tried breaking the glass, it was no luck. Then I heard it, the same noise I heard when I was inside the shop. Maybe the lady was right, I'm not safe out here, this bad ghost has found me. The noise was coming from all over the place, and it was getting closer. All sudden, the noise stopped. Everything was silent. I tried to run, then I noticed I couldn't move. I also felt a dark energy, like I wasn't alone. When I looked up, a shadowy figure, tall with red eyes, standing right in front of me. Then it spoke. You are no match with the entity you're fighting with. The shadowy figure said. With a wave of his hand, I was free. I started backing up slowly as the shadow man glides towards me slowly. Where am I? Who are, what are you? I asked. Hmm, she must have erased your memories on how you ended up here between the living and the spirit realm. What you mean between the spirit and living realm? Am I dead? I asked. Let me show you. Then the shadow man snapped his fingers. I couldn't believe it. The shadow man took me to a scene. This scene was in front of the spiritual shop. Everything was back to normal. The street was clear. The sky was clear. The cars, everything was back how it used to be. Then, I saw myself. I parked my car, got out my car. I waited for the traffic light to be green. I started walking towards the spiritual shop. Before I could reach the sidewalk, a black Cadillac hit me. It didn't miss. It hit me. I saw my own body flying across the road. As I landed, I left a trail of blood. There were people checking on me. An ambulance was called to take me to the hospital. As I was standing there watching myself, I was in a shock. The Cadillac didn't miss me. It hit me. After the ambulances left with my body in it, I saw my spirit looking confused, wondering why nobody couldn't hear me. Then I saw the lady in the black dress. She was talking to my spirit. She whispered something in my ear. Then I followed her in the store. The shadow man snapped his fingers again. Now we're back to the red sky, cold and foggy world. In front of the spiritual shop, my body was shaking in shock. I couldn't believe it. This whole time I wasn't alive, when the lady in the shop said, I see ghosts. She meant me. I was also a ghost. You are not dead yet. You are what humans call in coma. Your soul is between the living and the spirit realm. My duty is to make sure every soul is protected full keepers entity. The same entity took over that poor lady's body. The lady in the black dress, she is just a vessel. The entity tricked you by erasing your memories from the accident. The more it keeps you around, the more powerful it gets. The entities they prey on lost souls, so they can gain all the energy and power to permanently possess a human body. This way they will gain the power to walk among your kind. I've been tracking this entity for a while now. I have been looking for the girl inside for a long time. I feel ashamed it took me so long to find her. She has been there for so long. 
I am afraid is too late for her to return back to the living earth. However, we can still save her from the soul kepper. The entity, it put a blocking spell so I can't get in the shop. But with your vessel and my powers we can work together to save her. We don't have time. The said. Before I could ask what he means by work together, the shadow man came closer to me and disappeared. I felt like a strong wind just hit. Then I felt warm. I felt a different energy, an energy of anger also calm at the same time. I felt no fear. Everything around me looked familiar. My thoughts were not my thoughts. Somehow I could see clear like my eyes were X-ray vision. I could see through anything. I looked at the shop I saw through the glass, all the way inside the room I was in. Then I saw the lady in the black choking the girl. My anger grew more and more. I realized I am no longer in control of my body. The shadow man, he possessed my body, controlling my every move. I could feel his anger, his power, and his braveness. I teleported inside the room. I grabbed the lady in black dress by her throat. Through the eyes of the shadow man, I can see the creature that possessed this poor lady. I lifted the lady up in the air. I saw the fear in her eyes, or should I say the creature's eye. As I lifted the lady in the air, I looked into her eyes, or the creature in the eyes. Then I said something to the creature, but the voice was not my voice. You've done enough. It is time for you to go back to hell. After that, a dark smoke came out the lady in the black dress's mouth, screamed, leaving the shop. That was the creature possessed her, I thought. The poor lady who was possessed was unconscious. I laid her slowly on the floor. Then all sudden I felt light, tired, and weak. The shadow man he is out my body. I was terrified to what had happened. I felt weak. The shadow man was standing in the room with me. I looked at the teenage girl. She was unconscious as well. I asked the shadow man if she was going to be okay. He said she is going to a good place. He picked up the teenage girl and stood in front of me. He looked at me while holding the girl in his arms. A bright light shines on them before he disappeared with her. He said, Thank you for your help. Since you let me possess your vessel, I left a gift for you. When time comes, you shall receive the gift, but for now is time for you to wake up. After that, I woke in a hospital bed. The nurse ran into the room when they realized I was awake. I got up on my bed. Where is my wife? I asked the nurse told me they will call her. Do you remember your name? The nurses asked me. My name is Brian, I replied. My wife came to the hospital. She was happy to see me. She was not pregnant anymore. She had our daughter while I was in coma. My daughter now is five years old. Beautiful, just like her mom. My wife, she said she had missed me. She managed to pay the rent while I was in coma. I wish I could shared what I experienced while in coma, but I don't want to sound crazy. After four months, one day I was in the bathroom. My daughter and wife, they were downstairs. The doorbell rang. I heard a voice of middle-aged man, the man he claimed to be out new neighbor. As I was looking in the mirror, hearing the man's voice, I sense a dark energy, the same energy I felt when I had lifted the lady in the black dress up in the air to punish that demon that possessed her. I looked at my neck. On my neck, they were tiny dark veins crawling up into my face. I felt warm, brave. Through my eyes, I could see through anything like X-ray vision. From my bathroom, I saw the man downstairs in my house talking to my wife. My new neighbor, he was not human. I saw the same entity I saw in the lady at shop. I saw a soul keeper in my new neighbor. This was the gift the shadow man was talking about. I can now see the soul keepers. Then I heard a familiar voice. Looks like you found yourself a soul keeper. Thank you for listening and opening your imagination into this story. Please like subscribe. We will